You can stand on the cliffs anywhere facing the Great Australian Bight and look out there. It's an amazing field to look out there knowing that that's just bountiful, full of life. Part of the Great Australian Bight or what makes the ecosystem works is that we have upwelling events which are wind driven. So during the months of November through to April we get the south easterlies. What they're doing is pushing all these wind driven currents through submarine canyons and that lifts the cold nutrient rich waters at the bottom of the Great Australian Bight up to the surface and that stimulates the food chain. So that's providing the food that our premium oysters and mussels are going to eat. It provides the beginning of the food chain which then feeds the phytoplankton which is a little microalgae that feeds the zooplankton which is the little tiny bugs in the water. Those little bugs feed not only larval fish to grow up bigger, but it also feeds the fish that become the real basis of our food chain. The sardines and the anchovies, that feeds things like lobsters and it feeds things like snapper and salmon. And combining with the Lewin Current, which feeds down from the tropics, goes past Geraldton, Perth, Albany, and then from there it enters into the Great Australian Bight. That's bringing in the pelagic fish like the tuna. And they're coming there because of the food source which is generated by all these upwelling currents. It's just a seafood hub. There's no other way to describe it. It is the central place in Australia. If you want diversity, because it's been geographically isolated, it's got all these different species that you won't find anywhere on the world. South Australia is the driest state and the driest continent. So we don't have that fresh water running off and providing nutrients to stimulate the food chain. When that happens in other places around the world, you can get contaminants come into the water, but we don't have that here. So that further adds to the special nature of our gulf being very clean to produce those quality seafood products. We're fortunate on Air Peninsula in that we've got the Great Australian Bight, that huge expanse to the west and to the east, we've got Spencer Gulf. Now Spencer Gulf has got numerous fisheries and they're supported by not only those upwellings which drive the nutrients which flush into the gulf, but it also provides a clean environment for all those fish. And they rely on good clean water. And what happens every year is that that's changed over as soon as the temperatures of the water meet the same as the Great Australian Bight. When that happens, it breaks down that barrier and instead of just being a circular type of movement of water in there when it's warm, it starts flushing and therefore all that water gets flushed out. There's no possible opportunity for contaminants to build up within that ecosystem. What we have done in South Australia is we have dedicated aquaculture zones. It means certain part of our water is allocated for aquaculture activity. When we want to go ahead and establish those zones, we go through a rigorous scientific assessments and programs. On that basis, we would know that we would always be able to control any adverse impact on the environment. The seafood industry for the future is going to be vibrant and healthy. We've got a great environment in which to grow the seafood. We've got a whole range of products which are unique because they're all in one area. Better still, we've got great people that will innovate and they will always have a look at how to produce better products to meet market demand. If you maintain your fishing activity sustainable, you can further utilize and add value to what you can do with that product. Yeah.